Do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from VST Power. In today's video tutorial, this is going to be an awesome tutorial video for PS2 enthusiasts. I'm going to show you how you can take OPL version 0.9 and play games off a uh, off the network using a crossover cable. Now, I do have a router video. See the more info section. See the PS2 playlist for a link on where you can watch the router video. But if you have a crossover cable, it makes it so much easier if you want to play PS2 games off your internal hard drive in your PC or maybe off a USB hard drive that is connected to your PC. I highly encourage you to watch my other video that shows you how to use USB Extreme so you can rip your games properly to your partition or to your USB hard drive that's connected to your PC. So what I'm doing for today's tutorial is I have my USB hard drive. Let me show you guys real quick here. So here's my USB hard drive. I have a, a partition that's about 90 gigabytes and I have all these different types of games ripped to it basically using USB Extreme. So let me show you the first part of the process is how to share it. Second part of the process is showing you how to set up your ports correctly, your IP address uh, more specifically, and then the third part of the video is real life proof of showing this in process and in effect. So what I want you to do is you could right click your partition or you could right click your shared folder that has your game. So right click and go to properties, go to sharing, say advanced sharing. I'm using Windows 7 so if you're using a different type of operating system. Um, please adjust accordingly. Share this folder. Let's give it a name. Call it PS capital letters PS2 SMB. And then for permissions, I always say allow for all this for full control change and read. It doesn't hurt. And I say OK. I say OK. And I say close. And we're good. And if I refresh, we'll see this little icon here. So it shows that, yeah, we are sharing the drive. Awesome. So that's step one. Step two is we need to set up the IP address. So let's go into control panel real quick here. And let's go to network configuration. So network and sharing center. And then let's go to change adapter settings and then find your LAN connection. So I'm actually using a NIC card, a uh, network card on the back of my PC here that's integrated into my motherboard, which is this guy here, NVIDIA. So right click, go to properties, and then let's go to uh, right here, internet protocol version 4, TCP IPv4, click on properties, and I already set up some, um, let me do this again for you guys. So IP address 192, 168. Now here you can make it whatever you want. So to be consistent, I want to use 1.12 because I already have that set up on my PS2. Set that mask, leave it as this, 255, 255, 2550. Default gateway, you can leave it blank. That's perfectly fine. And press close. Now another thing that you should do to make your life a little bit easier, especially if you're using a Windows 7 or Windows 8 perhaps, is go to change advanced sharing settings and to set it up like this. So for the home network, make sure that it says turn on network discovery, turn on file and printer sharing, turn off public folder sharing, and then use 128-bit encryption, which is fine, and turn off password protected sharing, and then allow Windows to manage home group connections. And to be on the safe side, let's go down to public, say turn on, turn on, turn off, um, use 128-bit encryption, turn off password protected sharing, save the changes, and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. I'm using a crossover cable. If you don't know what a crossover cable is, you can go to the link in the video description. There's a monoprice.com where you could buy a crossover cable for like $2. It's you know, ridiculously cheap, better than your Best Buy or your Fry's Electronics or wherever you get your computer equipment. So with that said, let's jump straight into the second half of this video that shows you real life proof and apply what we just learned right now in the real world situation. Let's do this. All right, so here's part two of the video where basically I have my PS2 Slim. So here it is down there, and it's actually connected to my PC through a crossover cable. So here is the crossover cable, and we can see that if we follow the cable around, it goes from the back of my PS2 all the way over here to my computer to the crossover cable right here to the back of my PC. And then we take a look at the PS2 Slim. We take a look at the back side. If I do this, we can see that, yeah, here's the crossover cable right here. So what I want to do is open the lid, because some of you guys are still skeptics. You don't believe any of this. And I'm sure you that, yeah, this is real and this does work. So here's the Freeman boot. So let's go ahead and go into P, uh, OPL.9 and get this party started. Okay, so first thing is press start to go to settings. And let's go to network configuration. So what I have set up is 192.168.1.10. 1 
and then 255, 255, 255, 0. The gateway, it doesn't really matter what you pick here, but if you want to be consistent, go ahead and make it the PC IP address, which is fine. For the PC, make sure you set your static IP address as to whatever uh, static IP address you gave your PC. So I use 1.12. Port is the same. Share is the same. Guess is the same. All this is the same. Press X and OK. Go to Save Changes by pressing X. Press Circle and you're good to go. So press Circle again. And then go to your Ethernet games. And then press X. And we'll see that if you have everything set up correctly with your crossover cable and uh, ports, and uh, IP addresses on your PS2 Slim and your PC, you'll see a list of games. So I've ripped some more games here since the last time we did a similar video. So let's go ahead and run the Mortal Kombat Armageddon because I want to show you guys playing the same game, how much smoother it is over the, over the Ethernet connection rather than the USB. If you recall, and if you saw the USB video, you saw that the in-game movie was a little bit jerky and sort of slow at times and sort of buffering. Let's watch the same movie over again over the crossover cable and you notice that it is 110% smooth. It's awesome. So after this flashing color here, we'll show you the game movie in a second. And let's go ahead and turn on the volume a little bit higher here. Okay, so memory card. Let's go through this real quick here. That's fine. No save. Okay, here's the movie part. So let's skip this. In the USB video, this was this was buffering and jerking around. Here we'll notice that it's very smooth. And for those that don't believe me, there is no disc. There's no CD game in there. But ages of mortal combat have begun to tear the fabric of the realms. The critical point has finally been reached. Okay, let's skip that because we can clearly see that the movie is smooth. And if I go to the real game itself, let's go ahead and pick a character. We'll see that the game is still smooth. Versatile. Is the USB slower than Ethernet? Yes, it is. And, you know, you can use the crossover method like we're showing, showcasing today. Or if you want to use the router method, be my guest. I have another PS2 video that shows you how to do the router method. And even though that video is talking about OPL version 0.8, the concept is still the same with version um, 0.9, basically. So let's just show some really quick gameplay footage. We see that the loading is significantly faster than what it was on the USB, which is nice. And why do you want to go the Ethernet route? Because it saves your laser, just like the USB did. So we can clearly see that the game works out fine. If you got any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.